He's gonna take over yeah. York's bed now that he died. He's still standing his ground. <laughs> Doctor. I had like. Today's video, you are in for a treat because we're going to go find some UFOs. You heard me correctly. Treasure. Yeah, there's a lot of treasure in underwater, like underground water caverns. So we're going to the Blind Frog Ranch out here in eastern Utah where supposedly there's a lot of alien activity. And we have another special guest coming in right now. All the way from Florida, we got the Come Florida on. man himself. <laughs> hey guys! How's the drive? What are you doing today? Hey! Yeah, we just drove from Florida. Special delivery. 2,000 miles or something. Are Ladies and gentlemen. The back? Yeah, well, it's a you, Alec. The yeah. adolescent giraffe himself, Mr. Cletus McFarland, and his right hand man, Alec. What's up, guys? I'm Cletus McFarland, and you know, I'm a Florida man, so I'm out here in Utah for the first time, get to do some helicoptering, which I'm really into. And uh, just gonna go, I guess, explore, maybe see a UFO tonight. Dave's just taking us on the full tour, taking us on the grand tour of Utah. So he's already showed us some cool stuff, and we're just gonna cruise around and see what we can find. My name's Alec Carstens. Um, I work for Cletus. I manage the Freedom Factory, and I'm a part-time photographer for him. I just follow him around, do everything. Other than that, we're just going out to uh, rip in a helicopter and go see some UFOs. These yeah. boys are here in Utah to get in on some of the shenanigans that we're up to. They heard about the UFOs, they wanna go find the UFOs with us. And then last but not least, we also have another special guest over here, Mr. York Galland, hey, I fly hey. heli. How's it going? So my name is York Galland. I'm the owner and the pilot of this beautiful red machine right here. So this helicopter is a 2014. It's a low time helicopter. I picked it up off a of sheriff's department and um, had it completely redone, uh, paint and interior, all avionics are all brand new. So um, it was named by Vertical Magazine. They determined that it is the most advanced H-130 in the world. I trust them. It sounds good to me. That is the whole problem with aliens, is you just can't trust them. My favorite thing about this helicopter is that it holds seven people. So I got a bunch of kids, uh, I got friends, and so they can all have an amazing view in this helicopter. It's super wide. And so like the front three seats are like mind blowing, but even the back seats are pretty amazing. So great views, super powerful. It's, it's relatively quiet with that enclosed tail rotor and also makes it super safe for people walking on the ground or landing in the bush. How is my helicopter feel different than Dave's? Well, Dave's is one of the most capable helicopters acrobatically in the world. Um, but it's also, it's also pretty stiff and a lot of vibration, a lot of shaking. You take a beating. This is a little bit like the Cadillac ride. Super smooth, super quiet. It's got the autopilot. It's got all the latest and greatest avionics. So the BO-105 is like all man. And this is a little bit midlife crisis grandpa. Cadillac. Uh, Ethan and Sparks said, hey, we're gonna go camping. I heard something about aliens um, and I love aliens. I love fright. Um, I love scary movies. So I'm game. I'm assuming we'll be up all night and being scared to death. <laughs> and Ethan Roberts and oh, oh, he's he's here. a super special cameo from the law father himself. <laughs> so guys, obviously uh, we've got York's helicopter here, which is like the nicest helicopter I've ever seen. Probably the nicest helicopter in the country. Thanks. And then we got the old granddaddy helicopter over here. So uh, we're gonna fly out. We're gonna do some formation flying out to the ranch. So here's some, uh, here's some issues that we're kind of facing today. It's really hot. We're going through this ridiculous heat wave. What is it, 100 degrees? Can't be more than 114. <laughs> About that. And helicopters don't love heat. Um, they don't love heat and they don't love weight and they don't love high altitude, that whole combination. His does, because he's just got this monster engine. We're gonna be dragging skids all the way out of here to get in the air, but once we're in the air, we're good. Um, and then it's about a 98 mile flight directly east of here. So give or take an hour, um, we're gonna be landing out there. Hans is already out there with the truck and a bunch of razors. We're gonna land and we're gonna meet up with Chad and Dwayne Ollinger. Now, Dwayne is the dad, Chad is his son, who's a buddy of mine, and they're convinced that there's aliens and a lot of hidden gold out here at this ranch. So 
We're gonna go get to the bottom of it right now. Blind Frog Ranch here in the middle of eastern Utah. This place is nuts. So what's cool about this uh, spot is, well, there's a lot of cool stuff about it, but it's right next door to Skinwalker Ranch, the world famous Skinwalker Ranch that everybody hears about. That's literally just down the street from here. Um, they're famous for paranormal activity, ghosts, that kind of stuff. This spot is famous for UFO activity. And you'll learn all about that here in a minute. Super cool flight over here. I don't you probably saw some of the footage there. Went through a gnarly thunderstorm, tons of rain, tons of wind. Uh, that was crazy, uh, but well worth it. Now we're here in paradise. We're about to meet up with Chad right now. Ali, where'd you get that? Have you not seen this one? No. I've had that for about three years. Oh, yeah, wow. dude. The 105, that's the shit. Okay, this is the twin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yep. I did, I just got a new paint job. Yeah, right? yeah. We, we painted it, took some decals off of it. Yeah, dude. Good to see you, man. You too, brother. So I'm uh, Chad Ollinger, and right now we're here at the Blind Frog Ranch. I know Dave by uh, about three or four years ago, he was in the market for buying an airplane, and I was selling it, and he actually bought the airplane from me. It was a 2003 Comp Air. Cool plane. Well, ever since then, we've kind of always hung out and kept in touch, and a super cool guy to, to follow around, man. He's a neat guy for sure. So out here, for some reason, there's a lot of stuff that moves around that it's, I can't explain. All right, so we just touched down here at the uh, Blind Frog Ranch and met up with my good friend, Chad Ollinger. Um, Chad and his dad, Dwayne, kind of own and run the place. Um, they do have a TV show on Discovery Channel called uh, Blind, or Mystery at Blind Frog Ranch or something like that. And they're getting ready to uh, go into their second season, which is pretty cool. Uh, the show did pretty well. So... Super cool area. Um, we just landed kind of here in the meadow. Um, I think this is probably where we're going to camp as well. Maybe do some UFO spotting. Got uh, York's helicopter there. My helicopter over there. Kind of a crazy flight out here. Yeah. Super stormy. Flying through like a gnarly thunderstorm, <laughs> rain, wind. Um, but the plan right now is there's like so many different things that we're looking for out here. So many different like mysteries between the UFO uh, you know, claims and then the, the Spanish gold that's allegedly in the ground. So our plan right now is to head over to one of the underwater caverns and get in the water and just see how that feels. Uh, that supposedly they say the water has like healing properties and stuff like that. So all sorts of different claims, crazy stuff. Um, and we're going to kind of just feel it out, see how much truth there is to some of the crazy ideas and things that are happening out here. Chad, how we doing? Hey, good to meet you guys. Thanks for having Chad us. How's it going, brother? Man, yeah. Chad, my name's York. Is this your place? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you. Thanks right for having us. What's your name? Hutch. Yeah, this is Hutch. Hutch. That's right. Oh, we're super excited to be here. Yeah. We're kind of scared, Where's though. Hutch, where's my app? <laughs> 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 oh, I mean, here, I got it right here. What's your oh, your kids. What's the meter saying? It's uh, it's maxed oh. out right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right, right, right now. Hey, he he gave, he's gonna he, pop if we're He over. gave us the meter as I'm like getting the truck unstuck. He's like, ah, you need this fun meter. As I'm trying to get the truck unstuck, I'm like, I don't know if this is a good. Yeah, you've been pegged all day. It's not. It's not. This is not him, by the way. It's a random 
tight. Pegged. It's it's his full time job. Here. It's just handing him out. He's a fun person. Yeah, yeah. Huh. That's that's what we're looking for is the, the lost Spaniard treasure here or right over there. And we have like satellite technology, like ex NASA guys that they can search and see that it, we have gold here, no doubt. But like, is it the Aztec gold, like Montezuma stuff? Like sure. where where are we at? Yeah. So it's either we, we think it's either Aztecs or Spaniards, or it could be both. We don't know exactly. But we found like Spanish coins up here, uh, big like uh, arrowhead spearheads. Yeah. And, I mean, all kinds all kind of, of stuff. And coins, uh, you're making it like a kid <laughs> on Christmas. <laughs> Better not be playing with me. No, 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 no. But what? The, there's a lot of underwater caves, right? Yes. Like that's all the thing. under us is like so they're so they're caves, not mines or tunnels. They're, no, they're uh, they're natural caves. Okay. Yeah. There's a huge network of them, right? So yeah, so we had to drill in. That's these satellite guys were like, hey, there's water right here that's radiating gold, and we're like on the side of this mountain, and they're like, yeah. So we drill a hole, and that's where the water starts coming out. Like and right here. Right Just, over that. Yeah, where we flew over where yep. the truck was, right? Yeah, yeah. And, is it uh, okay if I story some of this? Yeah, whatever you want. Yep, do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> no, that's great. I'm dying. My kids are going to lose their crap. <laughs> yeah. They're at they youth are. conference, and they could have been, oh, like Matthew's such a gold freak. <laughs> oh, I love Matthew. He's like, oh, he's like one of my little heroes. Guys. It's the best. Okay, so coming out here, uh, people say UFOs like that. I'm like, yeah, right. 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 You're crazy you to skeptical. say that. Yeah, I was skeptical. But I've seen them. The first day last year, all the film crew shows up. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're watching and this look like they're like oh there's an airplane I'm like that's that's not airplane lights and no noise no nothing and it just kind of cruised right by what and then like 10 years ago my dad saw uh, nine UFOs out here it could have been wow. a helicopter with a finisher on tail because they're <laughs> super quiet <laughs> yeah, you, you just didn't hear by. it because the theory with in Kanab is yeah. that Montezuma transferred all of their gold once the Spaniards came into Mexico, Mexico City, they saw El Dorado, they saw the gold. Right. And then the, the Spanish went back to go get more ships to basically come back and take everything Montezuma had. He knew that, and so he transported all of the gold back to the motherland. They don't know where the motherland is, but essentially that's up north somewhere. Gotcha. And so that's where the theory in Kanab is that they have these tunnels that are borderline man-made or natural. They, they really can't tell. Gotcha. But then they would put the gold in there and then they could control the river and flood it. And so they would flood the gold into the, into the rocks to where when they needed it again, they'd dam the river back up, it would drain out, then they could just walk in and go get it. And so that's why the question is God. like... I mean, I've never heard it like that or that. That's genius. It's like, that, that, that makes total sense though. And so that's well, why I mean, El Dorado is somewhere up here in the motherland of somewhere in Utah. Of like, a, lot of, a lot of people would say it's by Camas because there's a bunch of gold mines there, a bunch of caves and stuff. There's tons of, tons of, so they say they brought it out of the Henry Mountains too. Have you heard the story about I've it coming out of the Henry Mountains? Kind of, but maybe. And what's with the happy button things? Some random guy that has a bait company that there's obviously no fishing out here. Gave us a fun meter badge that I'm not wearing. Took it off. Don't know where I put it. No one knows him. He just showed up. He's probably actually an alien. The more I think about it, I think he was probably sent down from the aliens to give us fun meters. That's my only guess. Dave, you have a fun meter gauge? Yeah, it's right here. I keep it right there on that old seat belt. We call it a fun meter. Maxed out. You see it just really hitting the limiter there. Ting, ting, ting. Actually, off the charts. Yeah. Off the charts, so it's bouncing off the limit. I don't even have a limit, so it's not really bouncing off the limit. I'm surprised it's not just spinning around and around. Is it, is it gonna vary this weekend? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally, maybe. She's literally been. If I find gold, I'm gonna bury my fun meter there in place of the gold. <laughs> explain what's happening here you're looking at just a dry hillside they had a satellite scan of the area done and those images said hey there's water under the ground here which if you're looking at this hillside you would never guess that there was water tucked against the base of this hillside so what they did is they had a giant drill come in you can see the drill marks over there by the by the cut drilled down it was like a 18 inch 20 inch diameter 36 36 inch diameter um, auger that went into the ground and then eventually hit a point where water started coming out that's right and so you guys knew that that's what they were talking about with the water being right there. And then from there, 
they just followed that drill hole with the excavator, pulled it all away, and now you see there's that's the entrance to something. That's it's right. weird that there's water right there, so it's tripping there me out. Have you guys, did he tell you why it's blind frog? Yeah, because weird yeah. blind frogs came out of it. A bunch of albino a, frogs, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And we know it's a cave, is because there's air in there and there, there's life, right? So frogs couldn't live without air. That's true. And that's how we know it's a, a natural cave, Somewhere not like a leaf. <laughs> so it's like, you know Chad, the other... just tell me one more time why is it called blind frog? Uh, so we dug this hole right over here. Is that the And uh, that's where the satellite hole? guys yeah. told us to dig. Anyways, uh, dug down and there was water that started coming out. And blind frogs started coming out too. So like know, albino frogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They so they had air seen, but no light. They oh, could yeah. just never, they've never seen the sun. Were they open like their eyes like trying to look at yeah, you? Yeah, like were you blinded by the light or did they just could, have no eyes? You could touch your so nose. The, yeah, you could touch your nose. <laughs> the reason why this is relevant and why it's important is because that's a weird place for there to be water. <laughs> And it's even crazier is that they dug in and it started to open up to this big cavern system. So it's either like this underwater cavern full of water or it was an underwater cavern that was open and then somebody's made water go in there to potentially cover up the gold is this kind of the theory. So that goes, what, 30 feet deep? Yeah, 30 feet. And then it goes back under? Uh-huh. Yep. Uh, yeah, I bet so. Yeah. It's so weird. Where is this called water coming from? A spring or? So obviously, time to get in the water. Uh, we're not gonna dive, obviously, because we don't have diving gear, um, and it's really murky, and it's kind of like sketch under there. Any of them? Yeah! Wow! Huh? That was the uh, 35 foot, right? Yeah, so I'm saying the excavator bucket. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. that was the 35 foot. Look at that nice in red. It's like the Corvettes. <laughs> Did he survive? Are you gonna gain off that? No way. Of course he is. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh. Woo! Yeah. Going in. Good, Moses. We don't know how to. Ooh, good extension. Good extension, minimal splash. Full merman yeah, coming out of the water. Out of sure. So this this guy that uh, brought those little buttons, yeah. he said he was had the chance to step into a portal the other day. <laughs> he didn't take it. He was he said We're trying to cook on just a fiery inferno right now. For some reason this fire is just like literally just burning Bunch twigs DNA, DNA. and it's hotter than any fire I've ever felt <laughs> my entire life. It's gotta be something with the wind, probably the alien activity making it hot, but like steak's been on there for less than 30 seconds and it's already very charbroiled. Somehow the steak's on fire. Just takes a burnt charcoal. Oh, no. At a spreading brush fire. Oh, that's terrifying. Five feet of the fire, my body starts probably to catch on fire. Oh, 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 that's so hot. That I'm like, okay, the, the the bra my bra is so cool. Yes. good? Oh, yeah. That's actually warm. This one wasn't nice. Oh, it's a spirit divining rod. <laughs> <laughs> it's shaking. Look at that. If it starts blistering, that's no good. Sign. Cook all the way through. Luckily, the sausage was pre-cooked, so all we had to do was warm it up. But it's definitely cooked. It's right off of that. Yeah. Right, right when the aliens come, I'll show up. Be the first one to show up are aliens. <laughs> Check this out. You jump their UFO. Yeah. <laughs> They'll find the UFO under me. <coughs> you guys hang out with Todd Duke at all? When we do Monster Jam stuff, yeah. Hey, do. hey Hans, how the steaks turn out? Not good. If you want to know the truth, it was not good. <laughs> Horrible. How to get burned? How to get burned? How to get burned? How to get burned? Are they beyond recovery? Oh, yeah. That one, that yeah, one, like, no one wants to eat that. No one wants to eat that at all. What about the aliens? Aliens won't even eat it. Guys, I think we need to make it up to that tree. Something's going on up there, right? It's it looks like it. My phone paired. One hundred percent. What's going on? There's that tree up there. there it's hey, look out it's an antenna. I was getting the vibe. <laughs> What's this? What you got? And Oh, what? Whoa. Yeah. Impressive. I can find those. Yeah. yeah you talking about a needle in a haystack? 
Look at these little Indian beads they're finding in the dirt. Oh, what? No, come on. You got a sifting tray over there. Barks. I've got an alleged Indian bead. 100% that's oh, what it is. That thing is like the size of the tip of a, of a, of a pin. I mean, that. don't lose it. That is nuts. Like back in, like back then, how would they do the little hole? Like, it's not how, like they how had, to make it that small. You are acting oh, like alien technology can't be more advanced than ours. Uh, that's true. This right here, they just the, the, his Chad's little boy just brought it up to me. He's like, hey, that's yeah. one of the Indian beads. This is nuts. That is tiny. And why is it? Oh. He's, what is that? Guy? You got this little bead here. The stack of bones over there. Yeah. You found another bead? Yeah, man. These are not closet of skeletons. Know. These are not the beads you get from China. Check it out. It's uneven in its yeah. shape. Here's this the blue is not one. molded. Check out this blue one. Yeah, you pick them up no with your fingers. way. Oh, you can kind of put it in like your fingernail. Kind yeah, of. Oh, it's so small. Small. it wasn't on earth. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's true. How in the heavens? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. They all seem to be the same Here color. This turquoise. Oh, there's there's like. It's green, it's crazy. Blue, red. I don't want to brag, but I've got a little piece too now. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. How do they make them that small? I have no idea. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like that. Because there's some red ones, a white one. Some blue ones. What do you got there, Ethan? These are old right. Indian beads. Or alien beads. One of or them. alien beads. We're not biased. Yeah. Smart. <laughs> He's the only one. I'm the only one that's going to be safe. Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. There's there. motor out and then yeah. tape the trim that fin, the, the trim the surface, yeah, yeah, yeah. basically in a neutral position, and then uh, flew the rest of the way home with both of our knees on the stick, like <laughs> shoving our body weight into it. It was oh, wild, dude. The bigger the crazier the trucks, the worse the giveaway. Oh, it is? Yeah, like we've done big six doors. We did our Mega Ram Runner for a giveaway. Yeah. Those are our worst performing giveaways. Really? Because people don't relate to it. They're like, what's going on? Like bar. Watching him. I'm gonna crawl on the ground. Oops, camera. Oh. Hey, you guys think I'm joking? There is something out here. I got the go goggles. Right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, is someone missing? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Ethan, if that's you, I'm gonna throw a rock at you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, uh, I've wandered off from camp about a half a mile to a mile because I'm super committed to seeing an alien or a UFO or something scary. And um, if I don't, I'm going to stay out here for a little while, like maybe an hour or two. I'm going to scare the crap out of the guys. They think I'm in my tent asleep because I'm the old man in the group. But no. Ah, 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 ah! Ah! What is that? You see that? Wait. Hold on. Maybe turn around so we don't see your shiny belt buckle. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Really, what are you doing? Weren't you a little scared? Yeah. <laughs> Terrified. Come on. I'm kind of scared to be the first one to go to sleep, I'll be honest. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that burnt every hair on my legs. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm really going to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll believe it. <laughs> See you in a few. <laughs> Oh, you don't know, them out. There's two that stay in. That way they. Oh, give me a last name. Uh,
How did we sleep last night, guys? Yeah, how do you think he slept, man? Do you see this like four-star resort he has over here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, his mattress this. inflates itself, def deflates itself. He's got a power cube. All right, Cole. Any sightings on your end? I saw a lot of unspeakable things last night. Yeah. I just don't think any of them were extraterrestrial. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was kind of like uh, <clears throat> guys gone wild. It was a you know, it was Roosevelt a Roosevelt version. <laughs> It was an amazing episode of Guys Gone Wild. Yes. Uh, and mostly guys just gone wild on giant cinnamon rolls. Uh, Dude, I don't think people can appreciate how large these cinnamon rolls guys were. Guys falling off the wagon with their diets. Somehow you're still looking like a Greek god, which is cool. Yeah, right. It makes the rest of us feel real good. Old Cleeter, 9 foot 10 over here, you decided know. to sleep in a 5 foot compartment, which was pretty neat to watch. Yeah, that was nice. The helicopter hotel. You know, a lot of luxury out here in these camping. You know, he had a blow up mattress. A tent that probably sleeps 18 people. Yeah, I'm sure his tent, I know for a fact his tent actually had central air, which was pretty neat yeah. to hear it running all night. Mm -hmm. yeah. but really impressive. I was actually, I was mostly impressed by old Alec. Looked over and he was just doing yeah. the dead, dead man on top of the razor. <laughs> Slept <laughs> on top of the Polaris. <laughs> that was impressive, man. So, guys, uh, Blind Frog Ranch, gonna give you a real honest review. I'm a little bugged right now because I came here with a lot of questions and now I'm just leaving with even more questions. It's, there really is a mystery out here. Uh, did we see any UFOs? I don't think so. Did we see any ghosts or skinwalkers? Not that I can confidently tell you yes or no. I don't think we did. Um, did we see a mysterious underwater cavern that's potentially filled with gold? Absolutely. Were we able to dive down more than five feet deep to see the entrance? No. But it was, it was like 30 feet. It was a, it was a it deep. It really bothers me. Like, who put that there? Yeah. Who had the time, money, and manpower to motivation dig to do it? Tunnels, here. probably the Spaniards the trying to hide their gold. This is so strange. So there's the leaving here. I believe a few things. I do believe there's probably treasure stashed in these hills because the way the water fills these caverns here just isn't very natural to the area. So that's unique, and I hope Chad and Dwayne and the family have luck this next season on Blind Frog Ranch digging and trying to find something because they found some stuff already another very fascinating thing to me was these tiny little indian beads that we found oh, yeah. yeah that didn't make any sense yeah, at all weird. it's like gold mining for beads it was and these weren't i mean you can't maybe appreciate them from the camera but these were not china made beads and believe me i know because i have a hundred kids i know what beads look like these were sort of odd they shaped handcrafted they handcrafted you know like when we were talking about these beads literally the entire bead was the size of maybe the head of a pin so that was interesting um and just some of the some of the stories that they tell out here and the facts and science that they're kind of backed up with it's kind of hard to deny so i think in order to take on the full like scope of what blind frog ranch is you'd have to spend some serious time out here like chad and his, his dad do but i will tell you this now that we've done this and we've experienced it our next stop is definitely gonna be skinwalker ranch um we're gonna head out there probably spend the night uh, here pretty soon and see if we can't get some sort of experience um what do you think for florida man you guys did pretty good Dude, it was great. Honestly, just flying through these, just yeah. through this terrain was amazing. Yeah, you're obsessed. I love it. All this guy's been able to think about since we landed was getting back in the air. <laughs> Which I don't blame him because I feel the same way. Yeah, I, thought, I was the only one who thought like that though. Ethan, any any final thoughts on Blind Frog Ranch? Um, it started out really, like it started out cool, but then like jumping into that water, I don't know, it was kind of like a little eerie, but then nothing really happened. But I think we got a little like, too used to it because for some reason last night the the sky was so freaking bright with that many clouds like i've never seen it like that before with full cloud cover how can it be that bright where you can have like pretty much see everything and then with the night vision you saw some like kind of weird stuff but nothing like super crazy but there's definitely realm for like there's something weird going on here so that's it guys that's blind frog ranch i wish we had some ghosts to show you but we don't obviously see it here in the video and you'll see that it's a unique spot and uh hopefully they continue to like just slowly cultivate the land and figure out where the treasure is and the final words about blind frog ranch from mr york gallon york you're the one who experienced the most will you say that and i've had that from comment from several people i don't remember a thing that happened last night <laughs> Um, I don't know where my 45 is. I've been just going to ask somebody where it is. I, I thought I just slept for a good 10 hours and I feel great actually. Whatever happened. You feel yeah. violated in any way at all? Uh, <laughs> no, I haven't really thought about it, but yeah. now I'm gonna. Yeah. We'll see. Give us some thoughts. Take a look at the mirror. Yeah. All right. It was a good night. 
Um, I think we even saw some blue frogs, right? Or white frogs? Yeah, I think actually Hans killed one, which is probably a terrible omen. It is a he terrible omen. He ran over it in the razor. He ran it over. Yeah. I was just saying, though, that on the way back to Salt Lake, we're going to take the, the windy way, right? Maybe oh, yeah. Cruise up one of those canyons. Oh, 100%. I've never done that in my life, so it was amazing. I messed up your audio. <laughs> that was amazing. Ugh. Such cool stuff. Dude. Very, very neat things to see. I am mind blown. That freaking EC130 is sick. So comfy. Yeah, I bet. Dude, those dives that you guys were doing, that was nuts. Got a couple good vids. She's that. a spicer, dude. Oh, yeah. And the doors open, some stuff was flying out, but. Yeah. Our adventure has come to an end. Um, we're gonna go grab some food, get Cleus and the boys on their flight out of here. Uh, Blind Frog Ranch, definitely cool spot. Uh, we didn't have quite the paranormal experience that I think we were expecting, but at the same time, how can you expect paranormal? I think it's just gotta happen when it happens, but it was still cool, great place to check out. And uh, Cletus got a chance to fly the helicopter and did pretty good there and saw some cool scenery it was a great time so anyways guys um don't forget if you haven't subscribed everybody who subscribed to the channel automatically entered to win uh one of my vehicles every 250,000 new subscribers we hit and we're coming up on a million which means we've got another big giveaway coming up so if you want a chance to win one of our vehicles subscribe to the channel right now and good luck yeah i'll drop you off yeah Grab my swimsuit, we're going for the It's kind of strange. It's, it's a little sketch. Yeah, dude, I think that's perfect. You're <laughs> 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 Yeah, dude, that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Slide it. <laughs> that's, that is 100% how you're coming in. Are you ready to go or what? You're running with Alec in the back. Yeah.